Greetings, everyone. Joseph James here with your Netly newsletter brought to you by the SchoolTrade.com. Today was November 16th, 2009. Had another great day here in the live trade room. Before we talk about the trades we took today, I want to remind you guys about our free resource online. Head to our YouTube page, forward slash School of Trade. While you're there, subscribe to this channel. Get all the new videos when they come out. Please rate and comment on this video. And then right at the bottom, below this video right now on our YouTube page, click on the track record link to get a full recap of our track record over the past 12 months in our live trade room. Live trade room totals for today, guys, 32 ticks out of crude. Got off to kind of a rough start, but we managed to keep things put together for the rest of the morning here in live trade room. 320 for the day today. Of course, that is a Monday, so our total for the week is 320. And as you follow me down, monthly total just over 4100 bucks this month so far. And we'll keep you guys posted as we make our way through the rest of the month of November. Trim today today is average to range, or what we call ATR. Now, what is it? How do we use it? Well, it measures the price movement or the volatility of a specific security, a futures contract, an option contract, a single stock contract. Now, before we talk about the average true range, it's important we know what the actual true range indicator is. Well, the true range, symbol TR here, now this is not very important, but what you want to know about it is, is that it's looking for the greatest out of one of the three with a current high of the less, excuse me, the current high less the current low, the absolute value of the current high less the previous close, or the absolute value of the current low less the previous close. Boy, that's a lot of stuff to know, right? Very complicated, very technical. That's why we don't care at all about it, right? Too technical for us. What we care about is what the true range value is, and I'm going to then take the average. Now, we'll usually take a 14 period average of the true ranges. So again, the true range indicator we then take the average of that. It's called the average to range, the ATR, and it's typically going to use a 14 period uh, moving average to, of course, develop the average to range. Now, how do we use it? Well, again, it's an indicator. I'm going to use it on my fast time frame. Okay, fast time frame, not going to be used in a slower time frame, fast time frame only, whether it be a two minute chart, 89 tick chart, four range, six range, so kind of a fast time frame. And you're going to look at it as a value being high or being low. Now, a high ATR level would be plenty of range. Maybe you want to take that trade because there's lots of room to run, right? Plenty of range, lots of opportunity for the market to move. If we see low ATR, that means there's very little trading range. That means sideways, horizontal markets, which means there's probably going to be less room for that trade to run. So you may want to then, of course, avoid that trade. Now, when do we use it? We use it before we start looking for those patterns developing. Now, the ATR is kind of a more broad-based indicator. It's going to tell us when the market is moving enough for us to actually want to get involved. If we're not seeing a lot of range, that means a potential trade is going to have a little bit less likelihood of seeing a long, big winner. More range, there'll be a higher likelihood of that happening. Lower range, there'll be, of course, a lower likelihood of that happening. So. We want to use the ATR before we begin looking for patterns to know if the market is in a position that has enough range for us to be, of course, want to risk uh, our hard-earned capital to trade with. We identify uh, to avoid slow, choppy markets, and of course, we identify to capitalize on a moving market. The higher the range, the more the trade will run, giving us more profit potential. For example, if the ATR is at four, that means the average of four ticks of range for every X period. So if we have a four ATR on a one minute chart, that would be an average of four ticks of range for every one minute. A 10 ATR on a one minute chart would be 10 ticks of range on average for every one minute of price. So you can see guys how the higher the number, right, the more the range. And of course, we're going to show you guys how we use this ATR tool every day in our live trade rooms. Come out and join us tomorrow morning, 745 Eastern time to start. Don't forget tomorrow, Tuesday, a free webinar in the room. Grab a copy of the beginner's course on the way in tomorrow morning. And guys, we're going to be at the Las Vegas Traders Expo this week, Thursday and Friday. So we're going to be closed on Friday morning live trade room. Come out and join us if you guys will be in Las Vegas for the expo. Let's talk about some of the trades we took today. Now, we had a little bit of a problem getting off the ground this morning, kind of your typical Monday, you know, choppy, sluggish getting off the ground. We were able to remain patient, though. We got over a little bit of a technology problem with data this morning coming into Trader, but we were able to keep patient, stay disciplined, and wait for our patterns to develop. We took our first trade today here in the room just after 10 o'clock. Now, we had spent pretty much the entire pre-market dealing with a problem with data, so we really didn't get a chance to look for much before 9.30. We saw 9.30 come and go. We then, of course, had 10 o'clock news, and just after that 10 o'clock news was our first trade here today, guys. All the trades we took today were on crude, and you'll see the first one here at 10.03. Now, at this point, we can notice, of course, the short-term trend here 
was to the upside. Now, believe it or not, this is actually a full stop. First trade of the day, guys, was a stop here. I gave a little bit too much room on this, guys. I'll take full responsibility for that one, so I apologize about letting this one run against us a little bit too much. But basically what happened here, guys, was that we saw, of course, this red line, right? Red line here at 77.80. Short-term trend was up, so we're looking for a swing high. We got that swing high here at 89. We then, of course, tested the swing high, then broke above it. Once we broke above it, got your fill there at 92. Now, of course, at this time, we were looking for green pace of a tape because we had the high of the day there right at 77.89. The high of a day, that means I want to see stronger price action because we anticipate the high of the day to hold as overhead resistance. So again, at the high of the day here, everything lined up pretty much perfectly here. Took the trade, but you know what, guys? Sometimes you're going to take some loss every once in a while. The key is getting out of this trade before it does too much damage, which we did a good job on. Nice tight stop here, but I'm I'm guilty as charged, guys. Kind of was hoping this thing was going to turn around because it did look to be pretty good when we get into it. Nonetheless, guys, took 18 ticks away from us there for the first trade here, guys. And, of course, we'll keep moving. That was our first trade, though. We weren't done yet. 18 ticks out of the pocket there at 10 o'clock. It was about 15 minutes later here on our third and then, of course, fourth trades. Once again, same thing. Short-term trend here was up. We found ourselves in the same situation, trading into the high of the day here again 15 minutes later. Now, good example here, guys, where we looked at the high of the day as resistance. We did not see the green pace of the tape. We did not see the momentum on our side, the large buyers. So we, of course, disqualified the long trade here. We then immediately then looked for a swing low. The swing low happened here at 44. And then the break below that swing low at 44. Now, this red line, you guys, was not there at the time. This, of course, is after the fact. So it recalculated and put that red line there. This was not there at the time we took the trade. We broke below the 44, though. Entry there was at 38 for this two-step short. Now, again, guys, remember, two-step pattern, counter-trend trade pattern. We saw price come up, pull back. We look for the break. Right, we look for the break above this to get in for the long side. We did not see the buyers enter the market. We know exactly what we're looking for. Lack of confirmation for the breaker long results in a two-step short. Counter trend trade here got filled there at 38. We took four, eight, and then three. Locked up 21 ticks there, guys, in the first trade. It, we weren't done there yet, though, guys. We definitely weren't done there yet. We soon, of course, once we have a two-step short, what is a two-step? A two-step is going to reverse the short-term trend. So when we see the reversal pattern happen, now we're going to start looking to trade with the trend. So the two-step short, of course, it now confirms that the downward trend here in the market, right? Downward trend here now in the market. So we want to jump in along with it. We broke below this red line here at 78.32. We made a swing low here at 25s, and of course, we break that swing low. There's your entry for a breaker pattern. This, of course, is labeled wrong, guys. I apologize for that. This should be called the breaker at 1034. Entry here is at 23, right, below that 25 level. And again, with the trend here, guys, a breaker short, four ticks, eight ticks, and five ticks, guys. Another 21 ticks there on the total for this second trade. We gave 18, right? We gave 18 back to the mark, guys, for the first trade. We just made 21 back times two, so we are now well in the green here on our second and third trades here of the day. Let's keep moving. Now that we're back in the green, now it's time to make some money, right? Last trade of the day here, guys, on the crude, 11.35. We had obviously now broken into the 11 o'clock hour. At 11 o'clock, what do we know? We know we're looking for lunchtime setting in. So, of course, with lunchtime setting in, we're looking for those final couple moves of the morning here. We're looking for tighter trading ranges. We're looking for slow down on my pace of the tape indicator, all to give us a clue that we got lunchtime setting in. We broke above this red line, 79.10. We then, of course, had our high of the day here. Once again, we found ourselves in a situation where we had the high of the day at 13. Again, had to wait for what? Green pace of a tape. Momentum confirming, along with nice big buyers there to break through that overhead resistance. What is the high of day? So we saw all that line up. 11.36, breaker long there. 14 was the fill. We only got four ticks of our first target there. Two contracts off of the first target. Eight ticks total, guys. They're 80 bucks. Total all up. Gave back 18 for the first, made back 42 ticks via two trades there, and then added eight more here to finish up the day here on crude. And, of course, that totals up to your 32 ticks here in the market. As you guys can see, you don't need to be over trading. We don't need to be taking uh, eight or 10 or 15 trades a day, guys. Only a couple trades. All you need, guys, to produce a pretty remarkable result. Come on and join us tomorrow morning, guys, in our live trade room, 745. Don't forget, we'll give you a free three weeks as part of our trial. Grab a, grab a copy of the beginner's course on the way in the door. Please write and comment on this video. And, guys, for lifetime membership, drop us an email sales at schooloftrade.com. My name is Joseph James. Thanks for coming out. We'll see you in the room tomorrow morning, 7.45 a.m. Eastern Time. Don't miss a tick. Bye-bye for now.